everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video tonight. I have your full WWE TLC 2018 show review and results. As you guys know, I'm going to take you through every single match on the card, let you guys know my thoughts on all of the matches, let you know what happened at the show, and just give my opinion on it. So with that being said, guys, we have a lot of matches to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. So starting things off, guys, we did have the kickoff show, and it started off with the Cruiserweight Championship match. My boy Cedric Alexander trying to regain his title from Buddy Murphy. Murphy. You know, these guys have excellent chemistry in the ring together, and um, I was kind of disappointed this was on the pre-show. You know, they have been putting them on the main show for a string of pay-per-views, and then they ended the streak here, and they had Cedric and Buddy go out on the pre-show to start off the night. I guess, you know, trying to get some engaging fans, you know, uh, trying to start the show off the right way. I personally did not get to see this matchup because I was a little bit late getting home. I didn't get home till about 5.40 or so, so I did miss this matchup. However, I heard good things about it, and I'm sure they put on a show, you know, you know, Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy are incredible in the ring. They have great chemistry. So I, res I, I, I probably will go back and watch it to catch up. But Buddy Murphy does retain the Cruiserweight Championship. Cedric Alexander does not regain his title. And we're going to move forward with Buddy Murphy's title reign. And I expected this result. Next up, we had our second matchup of the kickoff show, guys. Bobby Trashley and Leo Rush taking on Elias in this ladder match. And they, I think they changed the rules to this matchup prior to tonight's TLC because I thought I could have sworn this was a regular pinfall match with some weird stipulation thrown in. I think the uh, what it used to be was if you send the ladder and you retrieve the guitar, you can now use it as a weapon, but the match was supposed to end in pinfall. But I guess they thought that one through and figured out that you know the ladder is more devastating itself than a guitar, so I'm glad they changed the ruling. It was switched to a regular ladder match. Whoever grabbed the guitar first would be declared the winner. For what this match was, I thought it worked well. They didn't do too much. They didn't do too little. They had some cool ladder spots. Uh, both men slamming each other, you know, spearing each other into the ladders. I thought that was good use. Leo Rush wasn't too involved here. Uh, he didn't get involved, but not too, too much, you know, not overbooked. The right man won here. Elias would ascend the ladder and capture the guitar, winning the matchup. After the match, he was going to smash Trashley with it, but Bobby Trashley would get his heel heat back and smash it over Elias's back, and I guess that means this terrible feud is going to continue, but I'm glad that Elias did win up or win this matchup, and uh, the, the right man won. So I'm glad that he did win, and we're moving on to better things. So the main show kicks off with the finals of the Mixed Match Challenge. Season number two, the finals were R-Truth and Carmella from SmackDown taking on Maha, Alicia, F I don't can care what their names are, Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox, but uh, I was very disappointed in these finals, guys. I thought that Finn Balor and Bayley were going to be in the finals and that they would win, and Bayley and Finn Balor would be the final entries in the Royal Rumbles, because the winner of the Mix Max Challenge this year, um, both men, the woman and the man, are going to be number 30 in both Royal Rumbles, so I thought that, you know, Bayley and Finn Balor would be excellent number 30 picks. They'd be the favorites easily to win the Rumble. That would have been awesome. You know, Balor could win, Bayley could win, or you know, Balor could just win, or we could just have Finn Balor get a push. I mean, that would be the result of all this, but that did not go down. Uh, Finn Balor, they removed him and Bailey from the show, and uh, they had to replace Finn Balor with Apollo Crews, and then um, Alicia Fox and Jinder Mahal win anyways, and then this is your finals, and I didn't care about this match. I love our truth to death, and Carmella is slightly getting better week to week. She's not near as bad as she was when she was champion. She's actually watchable now, and um, I don't know. I, I wasn't invested in this match at all. I didn't care, but I am glad that R-Truth and Carmella won, so uh, you're looking at your number 30 entrant for the Royal Rumble. Maybe something will happen on TV or something, they'll write him off, or maybe something will happen and he'll have to give up the number 30 spot, but uh, I like R-Truth a lot, and um, I'm interested to see um, where he goes from here, but R-Truth needs to, I, that's epic, just put him in a mid-card title feud. I think he's over enough, everybody loves him, but he does win here in the Mix Match Challenge. Season 2 winners are R-Truth and Carmella. Next up, guys, we had the Triple Threat Tag Team Match between the Usos the champion bar and the new day for the smackdown live tag team championships and i was looking forward to this matchup a lot i thought you know these three teams are probably the three greatest teams in the entire wwe right now and uh they, they're the only picture they're the only teams in the picture on smackdown i swear to god can we get a new team in here but i was going in with a happy mind because all three of these teams can go three of my favorite tag teams easily um i was hoping for this match to be a tlc match i think that it would have took it over the top at least a ladder match Match. That would have been great. I think that all three of these teams could have got some chemistry in there, some cool spots and everything. That unfortunately did not happen. You know, it was a regular triple threat match.
match. It was still good for what it was. I thought when they kicked it into second gear, I thought it was really nice. The chemistry these guys had, the spots that were, you know, going back and forth between everybody. They had some really awesome action in this. I felt like the end was a bit disappointing. The bar do win, which is another thing that was disappointing. So first of all, the one disappointment with this match was that the Usos did not win the matchup. I thought that this was going to be the time the Usos reclaimed those tag titles and actually did something with them. But I guess they're going to keep it on the bar for now. I don't know where we're going from here. But uh, the second disappointing thing was that the ending was very uh, anticlimactic. I thought that uh, they could have went another five to seven minutes and had, you know, another gear that they kicked it into. That did not happen, unfortunately, but this was a good matchup. It was entertaining. I enjoyed it, and the bar do retain the SmackDown Live tag titles. Again, I don't know where we go from here. Maybe get some new challengers, um, maybe an NXT call-up. I, I don't know where they go from here, but it should be interesting to see. I was disappointed, though, but... Uh Bar retains the SmackDown Live tag titles. Our next matchup was the TLC match between Braun Strowman and Trash Corbin. You guys know how I feel about Trash Corbin. You guys know how I feel about Braun Strowman. I mean, going into this matchup, Braun Strowman, if he wins, he gets a rematch for the Universal Championship versus Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. Um, I, for one, before we move on to Trash Corbin's little stipulations, I, for one, my, my ship has sailed on Braun Strowman. I like him as a person. I like him as a character as far as, you know, his work and what he has done up to this point. He's gotten so much better. However, I don't want him as Universal Champion anymore. I don't want him in the main event scene anymore. His uh, They should have pulled the trigger a long time ago. I Literally, all he is is a big guy that knocks stuff over to me now. I don't want him as champion, and my ship has sailed. As far as Trash Corbin is concerned, if he won this matchup, he was going to be the permanent GM of Monday Night Raw. We all knew that wasn't going to happen. If he lost this match, he would be fired from that position, and that's exactly what happened, guys. Uh, Braun Strowman comes out to the ring. You know, uh, Trash Corbin's counting down from 10. He's like, once we hit 10, and Braun Strowman's not out here, I automatically win this matchup. Heath Slater was a special guest referee for this thing, and um, he's counting down. Braun Strowman's music's hit, music hits. He comes out. He's got his elbow in a sling. He's got, you know, his arms wrapped up. He doesn't have any wrist tape on. I know at that point he is not fighting. He is not going to wrestle tonight. Um, he's sitting there talking crap. He says, you know, this is a no disqualification match, which means I can have all the help I want. Out comes out of nowhere uh, Bobby Roode, Chad Gable, Apollo Crews, and oh my god, guys, it crushed my spirit. They, they pan over and Finn Balor came out there with a chair. All of them are holding chairs, and I'm like, man, Finn Balor, first of all, you have a match later tonight. Second of all, this is a jobber-like position. To be in this, you have your Raw Tag Team Champions and Bobby Roode and Chad Gable out there, and you have Finn Balor, and that is not a good look for either of those guys because that is like a jobber status to be, and that sucks that they had to be out there and have to go through that. But I guess, you know, it is what it is. You know, Finn Balor did feud with Trash Corbin, so I can't understand it to a degree, but totally crushed my spirit. But they beat the crap out of, him with, out of Trash Corbin with chairs. He runs up the ramp. Out comes Kurt Angle. I knew it. I called it. I knew this would happen. He beats him up with a chair. They get in there, do all their finishers. One, two, three, and Trash Corbin loses. And he's no longer Raw GM, so I'm guessing tomorrow night on Monday Night Raw, which I'm actually looking forward to to see what Vince McMahon says about the terrible product and what excuses he gives and all this mess. He's, hopefully they change some stuff up. They need to hit the reset button on the Raw product, but anyways, um, Braun Strowman's going to be the number one contender for the Universal Championship, and uh, that's pretty much it. I'm excited to see what Vince McMahon has to say, but Trash Corbin is no longer there, and thank God. Next up, guys, we had a pretty worthless matchup. By that, I mean I did not care about this matchup whatsoever. We had Natalya taking on Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad in a tables match. I say and the Riot Squad because Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan both came out. They were trying to get involved in this matchup. I'm going to go ahead and give a good old round of applause for, to Liv Morgan because, guys, she got destroyed. At one point in the match, Ruby Riot was on the apron, and she shoved Ruby Riot out of the way. Liv Morgan took a daggum spot, my boy. My God, she flew like 20 yards backwards, goes through the table. It looks sick AF. Applause to Liv Morgan for taking that spot. I thought that was amazing. Um, hats off to her. That was great. That was probably my favorite part of the matchup. Um, this matchup went on way too long. I mean, I'm glad that, you know, it wasn't really, really fast, but at the same time, um, I don't know. It just felt like it went on forever. Uh, very slow, slow-paced table match here. I did like the result. You know, I, I thought that, you know, Ruby Riot was going to win uh, just to retain that heel heat. But I guess since, you know, Jim the Anvil Nightheart was involved and all of that good stuff going into the storyline, they had to uh, give it to Natalya here. So she put on the jacket. She pulled out a table that had Ruby Riot's picture on it, like uh, Ruby Riot brought out the one with Jim on it, and, you know, she was going to put her through the table. But Natalya loads her up on the turnbuckle, and we get a turnbuckle powerbomb 
to finish this matchup and Natalya wins in a meaningless feud and something that meant absolutely nothing but Natalya does win here and I guess sort of avenges her father here against Ruby Riot. Next ladies and gentlemen we have my boy Finn Balor taking on the massive and the freaking beast that is Drew McIntyre and I was impressed with this matchup. I enjoyed this matchup. I feel like um, I wish it would have been a little bit more high paced but you know we did get some power from Drew. We got some you know athleticism and speed from Finn Balor. Great story being told here and Finn Balor gets the victory baby let's go let's freaking go got some momentum I know it wasn't completely clean but it wasn't completely dirty you know my boy Dolph Ziggler shows up we all knew he would show up in this matchup he shows up on the outside super kicks Drew McIntyre in the face he grabs a chair he goes to hit Drew Drew would big boot him in the face um, he would throw Ziggler in the ring he would put the chair in the ring he's about to hit Dolph Ziggler again with the chair out of nowhere shotgun drop kick into the corner uh, Drew put the chair up to defend himself and it ended up backfiring hitting it hitting him in the chest and he goes down to the ground Finn Balor coup de gras nobody's ever kicked out of the coup de gras on the main roster I don't know if anybody's kicked out of it in NXT but I know for a fact no one's ever kicked out of it on the main roster um, and he hits the coup de gras one two three and that streak continues here and Finn Balor gets some much needed momentum here uh, with these new changes that are about to take place on Monday Night Raw, I'm actually kind of excited to pair that with Finn Balor and this win. I know that Drew McIntyre is a beast, and he doesn't go down in defeat looking too terrible because, again, Dolph Ziggler got involved, and you can build Dolph Ziggler into Drew McIntyre. You can sort of have Finn willow away, go on to something new. You could even move him to the Intercontinental or Universal Championship picture. Um, he moves a step towards that after this matchup. Since Drew is still feuding with Dolph, he can blame Dolph for this loss and they can go on their own little tear there so that excites me so happy for Finn Balor he needed this win so much and this is a huge win for him so great win by Finn Balor I actually predicted this so I'm very excited for it and we're moving on next up guys we had a chairs match between my boy Randy Orton taking on Rey Mysterio in what I thought was going to be a pretty solid match, and I don't know, it didn't really live up to the expectation. You had some cool spots with the chairs and everything, you know, the slide under the ring with the chair, you know, on his stomach of Rey Mysterio, you know, that under the bottom rope uh, sort of dive that he does outside the ring. I thought that was a very nice touch. Uh, they had some cool spots in this match, however, um, the end of this matchup was disappointing for me. I didn't like how it ended. I thought they could go another five to ten minutes, um, but Rey Mysterio... Uh, he, he reverses Randy Orton to hit his face on a uh, chair. There were four chairs in a row. He hits his face on that, and then he hooks him again and rolls him over, and then he's on top of him, and it's sort of like a roll-up situation. And he pins him one, two, three, and Randy Orton loses again to Rey Mysterio. So now this is his second loss to Rey Mysterio, once at Crown Jewel, and then here. And I don't know. I didn't like that result. I thought that Randy Orton should have definitely won this matchup. Since he lost at Crown Jewel, that would have been a great way to get his heel heat back win in sort of dominant fashion I feel like. I feel like he should have used the chairs to his exposal and uh, really brought up that heel character but I feel like they have uh, dropped how well Randy Orton was doing earlier you know with this gimmick, this heel gimmick that he dominated Jeff Hardy with. I feel like they should have kept that going here if they did not. Um, Rey Mysterio wins up on a roll up and that was disappointing to me but Rey Mysterio is your victor. Next up guys we had the Raw Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey, who has become my favorite woman on Monday Night Raw, going up against Nia Jax, who I cannot stand. I don't like her in the ring. I hate her character. I hate that she flip-flops from face to heel every single week. Um, she's very green in the ring. She doesn't. I don't care about her. She's just awful, and she just makes me sick. That being said, though, they actually carried this to probably match of the night through this, uh, this far into the pay-per-view. I mean, Ronda Rousey, she has impressed me so much, guys. If there was a Slammy Award still, if that still existed, she would get most improved superstar of the year, hands down. I remember when she first debuted. You can even go back and watch my older predictions videos, and I talk about how, you know, she... When she came, I don't like how celebrities come over in wrestling, and I know that she was a MMA fighter. I know how you know a beast she is. I know how good of an athlete she was, but I didn't want her to be gifted these opportunities that she did not deserve over people like Bailey, Sasha Banks, you know, Ruby Riot, other talent that you know has worked their ass off for years to get to this point. But she has proven that she has put in the work. She has learned how to work in the ring. She has gotten better at every aspect of being a wrestler. And I respect the hell out of Ronda Rousey, and I think that she 
pulled Nia Jax to a good match, which is absolutely stunning. I thought the story they told was great. I love the the offense that she displayed. I love her reversals and uh, her MMA background coming into wrestling is beautiful. I love the transitions. She has just been a beast, and I think that Ronda Rousey deserves the Raw Women's Championship right now. And um, I, I have become a big fan of Ronda Rousey. Like it's. It's like she's probably one of my top three favorite women in the entire WWE right now. She is that good, and um, I don't think she'll ever steal the spot away from Becky Lynch for me or Asuka. I like both of them a lot, but Ronda Rousey has impressed the hell out of me. She does win this matchup. Great story told between these two women, and uh, I thought this was a great match. Probably the best Nia Jax match I've ever seen. Next up, guys, we had the WWE Championship match between the new champion, Daniel Bryan, taking on AJ Styles in their rematch. And this matchup, they gave him a ton of time. I thought that this was great. They were able to, you know, establish their storyline. Um, you know, they didn't have to come out 100 miles an hour. They let it burn. They, they came out. They did their job. I, I enjoyed this match thoroughly. Um, I just love that they gave them time in this thing to actually tell the story they wanted to tell. And you know this thing's not over. I think they're going to have another matchup at the Royal Rumble. And it's going to be great. I think that they could even top this. I think that um, it was, you know, I, I wish they would have kicked it up another gear. Maybe like some momentum in between there. I feel like there was really, really slow parts. However, I did enjoy the matchup. Um, I think if they get one more matchup, they can really kill it. So hopefully they get one more at Royal Rumble. We'll see AJ Styles compete one more time for, at Daniel Bryan. Maybe even a triple threat with another superstar uh, thrown in there. I guess we will have to see. But AJ Styles goes for a roll-up at the end of this thing. And Daniel Bryan reverses the roll-up into his own roll-up. One, two, three. Daniel Bryan retains. I hate when they end it this way because you know it's going to be open-ended. They do that on purpose so that you know there's not a for sure winner and AJ Styles could probably get another rematch. So we'll have to see where this goes, but I enjoyed this matchup. Uh, again, like I said, they let him run for a while, and it was good stuff. So uh, you know you're going to get a good match with Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, but Daniel Bryan does retain the WWE Championship. Next up, guys, we had the matchup between my boy Seth Freakin' Rollins taking on Dean Mean Machine Ambrose, as I like to call him here on the channel, for some stupid reason. This matchup, I feel, should have had a stipulation. TLC, table, ladder, chair, anything but what we got, guys. I feel like, uh, I don't know, I don't think this match is as bad as everybody's saying. I know that, you know, this feud isn't what we thought it would be. Dean Ambrose's heel turn isn't what we thought it would be. We thought it would give him some life to his character. It's honestly brought him down even worse. It's just, I don't know, they don't book him creatively in this heel turn. They don't make him, you know, a lunatic. They don't do anything outside of the box. And this matchup just wasn't what I expected. I thought it would be a lot better than it was. Um, I predicted it right, though. Dean Ambrose would hit the Dirty Deeds and take the Intercontinental Championship from my boy Seth Rollins. But you know what? That's okay. That's what we want because we want to build some sympathy. We want to build sympathy for Seth Rollins. That way Seth Rollins can go on to the Royal Rumble, win the John Brown thing, and go on to fight either Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania 35. So uh, I like that. Seth Rollins loses. Um, it's okay. Don't freak out. Now Dean Mean Machine can go fight Elias or Finn Balor or something like that. Um, that would be nice, but this matchup again wasn't what I expected. I thought it would be a ton better. Um, again, I don't think it was as bad as everybody's saying it is. I don't think it was absolute, absolute garbage, but it just wasn't what I thought. It wasn't as good as I thought it would be, and uh, that's it. Dean Ambrose is your new Intercontinental Champion. And then we had our main event, the match of the night, the triple threat TLC, first ever women's TLC match between my girl Becky Lynch, my girl Asuka, and Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. This was the match that I was hoped, or the most hyped for. I was definitely excited for this. I think everybody will attest to that. You know, Becky Lynch is easily the best thing going right now. Everybody, again, wanting to jump on the bandwagon this late. I mean, I've been on it since the beginning, but you know, whatever you say, whatever you say. Um, getting into this matchup, they had some hellacious spots. I mean, I think all three women delivered. We had some hellacious stuff. I think that um, they proved that they could easily put on just as good a TLC matches as anybody in the company. The, these women went out there and they delivered on all aspects. I thoroughly enjoyed this match. My favorite match of the night. Every single spot was enjoyable. We had, you know, the, the freaking leg drop off the ladder through the announce table to Charlotte Flair. You could clearly see the table didn't give and it crushed her freaking sternum and her diaphragm. Guys, I know it, that it knocked the breath out of her. She, you know, it blanked it out there, but I'm pretty sure she said the F word because uh, she got destroyed by that leg drop from Becky Lynch. 
Um, another good spot in the match was the, you know, the the freaking, uh, the senton from Charlotte through the table to Becky, the spear through the barricade from Charlotte to Asuka, the kendo sticks, the chair shots, the exploder into the table. I mean, there was some great spots in this matchup. The end of the match came when Asuka and Charlotte were battling on top of the ladder. Becky Lynch would recover, set up her own ladder. Um, Becky would then kick Asuka off. Becky and Charlotte would transition to the other ladder, fight forever. Out comes the baddest bitch. Ronda Rousey comes out there, and she knocks over the ladder. So uh, we had uh, Ronda Rousey knocking over the ladder, taking out Becky and Charlotte. And then, of course, Asuka would ascend the ladder and retrieve the SmackDown Live Women's Championship. And we have a new champion, and this sets up everything beautifully. Everything is in place. WWE actually knows what they're doing with this storyline. You put the championship on Asuka. This works out beautifully because now Becky Lynch can go win the Royal Rumble and all is right in the world. And we're going to get Becky Lynch versus Ronda or possibly these three women fighting in the main event of WrestleMania. I could easily see it. I'd be fine with it. Um, I love this to death. Great stuff. And what a way to end the ma uh, the show. I think it was a perfect ending. They should have main evented. They did a m fantastic job. All three women, all four women. I mean, right, these were the four stars of the night. Hands down, all four of these women put on the line. And uh, it was good stuff. I enjoyed the crap out of this match. And uh, that does it for your TLC 2018 full show review. For As far as the whole show's concerned, I don't know. I feel like there were some good matches. But for the most part, it's like nothing happened. It was just, I don't know, not the, not the most exciting show. Um, but I don't know. I, I enjoyed the show. It's not like I didn't enjoy the show. But at the same time, it's like nothing happened. It just wasn't very... There wasn't a lot of action or something. Besides this main event, I mean, I, I love Daniel Bryan and AJ. I loved... Uh, uh, Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre was solid. Dean versus Seth did not live up to the expectation. Um, but this matchup delivered, and I, I, I thoroughly love this. Easily match of the night, but that pretty much does it for your TLC 2018 full show review. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Comment down below what you thought of TLC yourselves. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.